Residents in Gaza say the region's main southern city, Han Yunus, is now surrounded by armed Israeli forces and under almost nonstop fire as Israel tries to take out Hamas's main stronghold in the south. All of this as the UN says its training center, where hundreds of displaced people are taking shelter in the area, has been hit. Chief National Correspondent Matt Gutman joins me now from Tel Aviv, Israel, for more on this. Uh, Matt, the White House says there are serious discussions about trying to get another pause in place uh, to, in the fighting to secure the release of the remaining hostages. So what is the latest on that? Uh, Morgan, uh, uh, Bert, Brett McGurk is in the region. He's been bouncing between Qatar and Egypt. He's the U.S. Special Envoy who's been delegated with trying to jumpstart these talks. There have been a couple of offers sent back and rejected between Hamas and Israel. Uh, the latest one, which apparently was rejected by Hamas, offered a two-month ceasefire by Israel in exchange for the release of the hostages. About 100 of them are believed to still be alive um, in phases, and that would also be accompanied by a certain number of Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails being released as well, unclear to where. Um, the big hang up at this point is about the number of hostages to be released, who would be released, and the length of the ceasefire. Hamas wants Israel out of the Gaza Strip entirely, a full withdrawal before even talks begin and they can release hostages. Israel saying no way. Um, we want a phased withdrawal and we want everybody out and this is going to just be a temporary thing. Um, but again, both sides seem to be inching towards it. There is mounting pressure on Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. There have been multiple actions almost every day by the families of the hostages, um, barricading themselves in one of Israel's major highways, um, posting up right outside his residence in Jerusalem, his residence in Caesarea, just north of Tel Aviv. They're trying to amp up the pressure and make create more awareness to the fact that these hostages are still there, they're languishing, and they might not live a lot longer, Morgan. And Matt, before I let you go, the UN's top court is expected to rule on the genocide case against Israel tomorrow. Uh, Israel normally considers uh, UN and international tribunals unfair and biased. Um, how significant is this case and, and what will you be watching out for? This is probably going to be an interim ruling in which the ICJ will say, A, whether it believes that there is even any uh, foundation in the allegation by South Africa that Israel committed genocide. And if they find they come to that finding, then it's possible they'll ask the U.N. Security Council to uh, demand that Israel cease fire immediately. But that would likely be vetoed by the U.S. Still, Israel is taking that very seriously. But I think what's become clear so far is that the only thing that is going to stop this conflict at this point is a negotiated ceasefire based on an exchange of Israel pulling out to some degree from the Gaza Strip and then getting in exchange uh, a certain number of hostages. They hope all of them. Um, but that's pretty much the only thing right now that's going to move the needle, not as much the ICJ. Of course, it would look very badly for Israel if they come back with a ruling that Israel uh, did in some way commit genocide. Morgan. And we know that you've got eyes on it. Chief uh, National Correspondent Matt Gutman in Tel Aviv for us. Matt, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.